Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are checking out the 2016 Subaru WRX STI. Now this is a special edition as you can tell from the vibrant exterior. So this is called the Series Hyper Blue, one of just 700 which are going to be made. And so included with that vibrant exterior you also get matching interior stitching. It comes with black BBS wheels and you also have black mirrors. So mainly aesthetic uh, changes, nothing really mechanical different about this. Under the hood is the same 2.5 5 liter boxer engine that they've been using since 2008. It produces 305 horsepower and 290 pound feet of torque. Now the engine is matched with a six speed manual transmission. This is the only transmission offered and that power is sent through a very clever center differential. So Subaru calls it a driver controlled center differential and what this DCCD is, is it can vary the torque from the front to the rear. So nominally you're going to have a 4159 split so it's going to be biasing power towards the rear. That said, you can lock up that center differential for a 50-50 split. And so this can be done automatically or manually. There's different modes you can choose. So you can put it in auto plus and it will bias locking up that center differential to send more power towards the front. Or you can put it in auto minus and it will tend to send more power towards the rear. Or you can manually select how you want it to send it, if you want it to send more to the rear or if you want it to send, uh, you know, have it completely lock up that center differential. So from the center differential, power goes to the front, there's a helical limited slip differential, and to the rear, a torsion limited slip differential. So at pretty much any point, you know, on pretty much any surface, torque is gonna go where there's available grip. You've got three limited slip differentials, front, mid, and, and in the rear. And so because of that, tons of acceleration grip. There's very few scenarios where you'll find yourself not being able to accelerate well. That said, you know, if you're on ice, you're not going to be able to brake well, so it's not like you want to get up to a really high speed anyways. Now, Subaru also has the ability to change the throttle mapping. So you've got Intelligent, Sport, and Sport Sharp. And so what this does is it changes it so that, you know, how much you press in the pedal opens up the throttle more. So if you have it in Sport Sharp, essentially it acts like an on-off switch. It's either full throttle or no throttle. And so I don't tend to use that as much. I have an STI myself, and I tend to leave it in Sport, uh, where it seems to be a little bit better of a linear curve and more control, rather than just going all out every time you put your foot on the gas pedal regardless of if you press it in a little or a lot. And then there's intelligent mode, which kind of tones it down a bit so you don't get too much uh, throttle response like you would have in the Sport or Sport Sharp modes, uh, and so you don't get into the higher throttle unless you're pushing your foot down all the way. But if we pop it down into second gear here, I mean, this thing can accelerate. And, you know, the roads are nasty right now. It's cold outside. As you can see, there's snow to the right and left. And it's just so capable of putting down all the power that it has. Now, one of the things I noticed when I had the 2015 Subaru STI in, and I actually had a, a viewer's car in, and so they had changed out the wheels and the tires, and they had changed the diameter on the wheels and tires, so it was a slightly different uh, set. And so when I was testing it out, I noticed mid-corner, the steering felt a little weird. It was a little uncertain, a little unsure of itself, uh, and I haven't noticed that at all. I went through some tight corners uh, earlier today in this, and you know it didn't have any of that uncertainty. It felt very planted, very rigid, uh, great control in the steering wheel. I really do like the improvements they've made with the steering for the new generation. It's a tighter ratio. The response still isn't uh, tremendously great. You know, there's a little bit of delay between turn in and getting the vehicle to move, but it has a nice weight that builds as you go into the corner. And I really like the way it feels. And I also really like the sharper ratio, uh, so you don't have to turn the wheel quite as much to turn in. Now I drive a 2014 Subaru STI, and there are some nice changes for the new generation. These include a push button start, smart entry door handles, an additional display with a digital boost gauge, a much nicer and larger infotainment system, a vastly improved Harman Kardon audio system. It also has different seats, which are a bit more firm. However, they are well bolstered and still comfortable. In addition to a tighter steering ratio, there's now a flat bottom steering wheel and they've increased rear legroom. Now, as far as the gear shifts, it is a little bit notchy as far as the selector itself, uh, but I do really like the clutch. Very smooth engagement, and it uses the whole range of the clutch pedal in order to engage the clutch. So that gives you smooth engagement, and it gives you a lot of control. So I really do like the manual transmission in this vehicle. As far as the brake pedal feel, you know, not a lot of travel. Uh, it gets pretty firm as you press into it, and it does initially bite uh, pretty soon. So not a lot of travel, fairly sensitive, but you do have a good amount of control in it. 
I also do like the way they have the pedals laid out. You know, the brake pedal and the throttle pedal are pretty close. And the throttle pedal and brake kind of work out where as you press onto the brake, your foot's right there that you can blip the throttle if you want to heel toe a downshift. Not saying that I'm the greatest at it, but the pedals set it up for you to be able to do it. Let's see if we can demonstrate that very briefly. Not terrible. <laughs> Now I've already done a zero to 60 with the 2015 SDI and because conditions are pretty crappy out here, I thought what I'd do is something a little bit different and do from five miles per hour and then put my foot down uh, without you know using the clutch at all, just have the clutch already engaged, start from five and see how long it takes to get to 60. Something a bit more realistic uh, that drivers, you know, when they're merging onto a highway might actually use because most SDI drivers probably aren't dumping the clutch every time they get onto a highway. And so in my previous test, I did about 5.5 seconds. Now that was with a little bit narrower of a tire. It wasn't the stock tires on the car. Uh, and also, you know, you have to keep in mind there's two gear shifts to get to 60. So part of it comes into play that it has really aggressive gearing. So the acceleration is really strong, uh, but because there's two gear shifts, the zero to 60 may not look as good. This car is definitely capable of hitting 60 in under five seconds, uh, but we're gonna see what it's like to go from five miles per hour at a very low RPM and get it to 60 miles per hour. And so I'm gonna have the traction control off and I'm gonna put it in sport sharp mode so it's pretty much just throttle on once I put my foot down on the gas pedal. So we'll see how it does. And then put down. So, you know, that felt really strong. It was a little slow to get into the boost, but then once you were in it, really strong acceleration. And also keep in mind, you know, there's two gear shifts there. So they could make the car faster to hit 60 uh, by changing the gearing where second gear could hit 60, but the acceleration wouldn't be quite as good in that scenario. So. You know, I like the way they've geared it. It's very aggressively geared, short ratios, uh, and it always keeps you up in those higher RPMs when you want to be in them. One of the things that I think is pretty crazy about this car is that it's 2016, and this engine is relatively unchanged since 2004. In 2004, it had 300 horsepower. In 2016, 12 years later, it has 305 horsepower, five horsepower more. And you think, you know, do they need to get with the times? Do they need to add power? And yet somehow it still feels relevant. It still feels like it has plenty of power and it's a really fast car. Um, so it's surprising to me that this engine still feels relevant regardless of whether it is or not. Now it does have a little bit more turbo lag and not quite as much low end torque as some of the other engines out there uh, by today's standards, but it's still a very quick car. I think the two things that kind of hold this back as far as, you know, is it still relevant today is the interior noise levels. They're pretty high um, on the highway, you know, low 80s in the decibel levels compared to most of the cars I test are in the 70s range. And also the fuel economy, 17 in the city, 23 on the highway. By today's standards, that's not good. There's heavier cars that are more powerful. There's faster cars uh, that are lighter weight and, you know, all ends of the spectrum, there are cars getting much better fuel economy, even still with having all wheel drive. So by today's standards, I think they need to update the fuel economy and that'll just come when they get into a new engine like they've done with the WRX, uh, which has phenomenal fuel economy and yet is just equally as quick as this uh, in a straight line at low speeds. So overall, I've really enjoyed driving this. I really love the hyper blue color that they've put on it with the black wheels. I think it looks fantastic. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.